Looks like you came back to figure out how to set up your analytic accounting appropriately. I'm flattered. And I promise by the end of this, you'll understand analytic accounting a lot better and feel comfortable setting it up for you and your company. So let's start at the very top with plans. So go ahead and start typing plans. We're going to come all the way down to analytic plans here. So if you followed my last video, you'll recognize some of these plans here. So let's go ahead and hop into departments real quick and break this down. So we have the name of the plan right here. And we can also set the parent to create a hierarchy of our analytic plans. We can also set our default applicability. So the applicability is saying whether this is optional, mandatory, or unavailable. This is default because we can actually come down here in the applicability tab and make an applicability for each of these situations. So we can set up a domain and then we can set an applicability here. So we could say for miscellaneous journal entries, the applicability is this. And that way we can be a bit more specific as far as how we want our analytic plans applied. Just to make sure we're on the same page though, for each applicability, default included, we can say that this is optional in this situation, mandatory, or unavailable. So as an example here, if we wanted for miscellaneous journal entries to say that this is unavailable, we wouldn't be able to see this plan in the analytic distribution for a journal entry like that. Then for an invoice, we could say that it's mandatory meaning that this plan would have to be fully filled out up to 100% before we could post this transaction. We could take this even further and limit down our accounts that it applies to or our product categories as well. Also, we can set the color that this shows up as just to make our lives easier. So you can see that this is that nice purple and that's that nice purple. So we've got our plan all set up nicely, but what about our groups underneath the plan, our analytic accounts? How do we set those up? So we've got a nice little analytic account smart button up here. If we click into that, we can see we've got administrative, we've got commercial and marketing, and we've got research and development. So let's click into administrative. You can see we've got a gross margin. We're not messing around with that right now, but you can also see our customer invoices. Inside of here, we just have the name, the plan, the company, then we have a reference and a customer, which we're not really going to go into right now because it doesn't really apply to what we're doing here. So if you want to add an additional department here, another analytic account, we just go to new and we would say this is groundskeeping. And we're going to leave this departments is good. Company is good. Let's go ahead and save. So nothing too crazy there. We've set up our analytic plans and then we have our accounts, which are the groups that we want to break things up into underneath the plans. The last thing we're going to talk about here, and it's not too terribly difficult, is our analytic distribution models. So these distribution models allow us to say if it's this account or this partner or this product, automatically apply this analytic distribution. Now I'm kind of annoyed that these are the only criteria that they gave us to automatically apply analytic distributions, but we may have a workaround for that. So if you want to see a workaround for additional criteria, go ahead and drop a comment below letting me know that. So let's go ahead and create a new one here. So we could say, okay, these accounts get it applied um, for a certain partner. So Abigail Peterson, maybe there's a different way that we want to have her allocated within our analytics products. Same thing. We may have a different way that we want this approached. And then really all we need to do is set up our analytic distribution. So I've got nothing here. So this should apply to everything. So if we come into departments, I'm going to go to administrative, say we have 40% there. Going to say commercial and marketing gets 20. Say 10% for groundskeeping. And then the final 30% is going to go to research and development. So Click the X, go ahead and save. And now let's go over and let's create a new draft invoice. So if I go to new, we're gonna go ahead and grab Azure Interior, add a line, and you can see right when I add that first line, it doesn't care, well, it kicked it away, so I guess it does care a little bit. But if we click into this, you can see we've got that 40, 20, 30, 10 split. Now a quick word of caution. So you remember that save button I told you not to press? Well, let's look at that real quick. 
So if we come into analytic distributions and somebody reset the database, so that's why that doesn't show our latest one. Go ahead and add a line, administrative, commercial marketing, and we're going to say as well, research and development, we're gonna say 20, 20, 60. So in this situation, if I click save, it's going to create an analytic distribution model. So you see that it says save, and you may not be able to see this because it's pretty tiny, but it says save as new analytic distribution model. We don't want everybody and their dog creating analytic distribution models. It's kind of annoying that they have this save button here. Thankfully, it does pop this up. So maybe a person would be smart enough to just go in and say, oh, um, crap, let me go ahead and discard. Anyway, train your people to be careful about that. Or if you want to go even further, shut down their access rights to analytic distribution models. So that's analytic accounting. It can be a super useful tool if used correctly. In fact, reporting with analytic accounting is awesome. And I might consider doing a video on that if you guys drop it in the comments and ask for it. But otherwise, I'll just leave it here for now. Good luck.